What's up guys, it's Garrett from Backyard Foundry and today I got a real special video for you guys and I'm sure most of you are familiar with gallium and many of its properties, especially pertaining to aluminum. Hint on what this video is about. Um, but for those who don't, I'm going to give a quick explanation. Gallium element 31 is a rather soft silvery metal used primarily for electronic circuits, semiconductors, and light emitting diodes. It is useful in high temperature thermometers, barometers, and pharmaceuticals, as well as nuclear medicine. The largest producer of gallium in the world is China, producing about 95% of the world's total supply. It is mainly extracted as a byproduct of zinc production, and interestingly, the largest amount of pure gallium ever collected in a single place is the gallium germanium neutrino telescope used by the SAGE experiment at the Baksan Neutrino Observatory in Russia, and it contained about 55 tons of liquid gallium. However, perhaps the most interesting layman's property of the metal is that gallium attacks most other metals by diffusing into their metal lattice, thus causing the metal to become very weak, weak and brittle. I put a small amount onto this can of coke to demonstrate, and it took about 10 minutes for the can to burst. And that brings us to our uh, topic for today is I want to know what happens if I put molten aluminum or molten gallium into the carburetor of this running engine. Now, this engine is mostly aluminum, so the theory is that it should combine with the aluminum and weaken the structure of the engine, causing some sort of failure. Um, comment below if you think it'll work. I could go either way, truthfully. I don't know if perhaps the oil in the engine would uh, protect the aluminum or if it, it, the gallium will even be in contact with it long enough to affect it, but that's what we're here to find out. And just to show how much aluminum is actually in this engine, I got a magnet here. So the entire, entire cylinder is aluminum, the whole block is aluminum top to bottom. Uh, the carburetor over here is also aluminum, and that's where I'll actually be putting the gallium in through. Um, and then lastly, the head is aluminum. Alright guys, I got everything set up and I'm going to heat up the engine, let it warm up for a bit and then we'll get right to it. Alright, I got the engine all warmed up and so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to rev it up to uh, pull more airflow through the carburetor and then I'm going to slowly pour in some gallium through the air intake and that'll pull it right through the engine. So let's get to it. So as you can hear, it's uh, so far survived about 10 grams or so of gallium running through it. I didn't expect it to stall right away, I mean, aside from the metal running through it, because uh, the gallium does take a little bit to take effect. Um, so what I'm going to do is one last one. I'm going to fill this pipette up as much as I can and just run it through. That was pretty impressive at the end there the engine actually took according to this pipe at two milliliters and didn't crap out at the end which is kind of impressive of, of itself um but so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave the engine overnight um to see if any of the gallium either uh, seep through to the to the crankcase any left in the cylinder and the carburetor might eat through to the engine and then we'll see what happens if it'll run tomorrow or not so i took the spark plug off just to just to see into the cylinder 
and there is definitely gallium still in that engine block so I'm really excited to see if anything happens to it over the night so yeah that's pretty cool that's definitely a good sign for the uh, for the uh, test all right, so the engine has sat for a couple of days. Uh, hopefully it'll let the gallium work into the metal. So uh, let's see if she'll start up now. So it looks like it survived that actually. Let's take it into the workshop and uh, see how the insides look on her. All right, so let's take a look inside the cylinder and see what we're looking at. Hmm. That is definitely gallium on that cylinder head right there. And I'm willing to bet that if it's on the head, at least some of it is on the cylinder wall there. You can see it right there. Don't mean to flick y'all off. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, there's like a small film of the gallium all over this engine and I'm sure if you look under here under the valves that the exhaust valve is just filled with gallium because as this pushes up all the exhaust gases get pushed up 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 and out through the exhaust valve and into the muffler so I might take the muffler off here and see if there's any gallium in there because as you can see there's gallium all over this engine right over here right where the gasket meets the head there's a large buildup over there and I'm kind of surprised that uh, the gallium didn't eat at the aluminum if I had to take a guess I'd say it's because it's so cold here in Ohio right now I mean we just got like three four three inches of snow or so in the last two days that the gallium just cooled off too quickly to interact with the aluminum um, so maybe I'll try this test again in the summer and see if uh, I get a different result. But I'm going to pull off the muffler here and empty out some oil and see if there's any gallium in the oil and then in the muffler. So let's get to it. All right, so the oil... I don't know if you guys can see it very well. Uh, it's pretty milky. It looks like a chocolate milkshake, but uh, it's just because the oil in this engine is super old. The engine itself is old as dirt, um, so I just chose to destroy it. But uh, yeah, I can't see any sparkles in there, so it's likely that not a ton of gallium slipped past the piston rings and into the crankcase. So. All right, so as you saw, we got the oil and the muffler off. Um, I'm kind of surprised, though, because there actually is not a ton of gallium in this muffler. It's kind of hard to see for y'all, but if I try and scrape some out, there's no silver on my fingers, which is kind of surprising, considering it, all the exhaust gases, once the, the fuel is ignited, it goes through the exhaust valve and out through the muffler. Um, it could just be because the gallium is too heavy. I don't know. Or perhaps it's... Uh, all the gallium is deeper in the muffler that I just can't get to. All right, so as you guys probably, as you guys saw, the engine survived having the gallium just run straight through the carburetor. Um, but I was kind of looking forward to seeing it uh, 
break. So, and I'm sure you guys were too. So what I'm gonna try next is I'm gonna put gallium between all the threads for the head, on all the thread, the bolts for the head. I'm gonna put a little bit straight out of the piston. I'm gonna run a little bit more through the carburetor and then I'm gonna let it run for about half an hour because as you guys saw with the uh, Coke can, it took about 10 minutes just for it to eat through that little bit of aluminum. So I'm gonna let the engine run for about 30 minutes or so um, with the gallium in it and see if that does anything. I have to let it run. I can't let it sit because it's so cold out here. The gallium will solidify in a couple of minutes. So let's see what happens. Alright guys, this is a final test here. Let's see if uh see if the gallium compromised the aluminum enough. So as you guys saw, the engine did survive. I guess the gallium didn't uh, affect the uh, aluminum enough to, to cause it to break under the pressures of the, of the combustion, but uh, kind of disappointing, but can't win them all. Thank you all for watching, and if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe for more.